A very good evening to you and of course our incredible panel of women. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Offside Maidens. Also welcome to Cricket Fanatics magazine. Remember to click subscribe it's in one of these corners. You'll find it. Click it, subscribe and enjoy the fantastic content. This is a cricket show with a difference because it's an all-female panel because women play watch and have views on cricket. We plan on having guests of every persuasion, though, joining us weekly. And we will discuss topics that go far beyond women's cricket, but we are aiming to focus on women's cricket, empowering women in all facets of the game, including broadcasting. I will be your host. My name is Tara Lee, which means I won't exactly be sharing my opinion, but I will be trying to manipulate the panel into sharing my opinion instead. I have not played cricket, but I've always loved the sport. I have watched it since I was very young and I've been in broadcast media for the past seven years and I am currently head of sport at Magic 828 in Cape Town and Alem Radio in Johannesburg. I'm very excited to be with you this evening. Thank you for joining us. And before we go any further, I would like to make a special statement before our producer gets too antsy in the background. The views and opinions shared here are the views of the individual sharing it and not that of cricket fanatics or the show per se. So we do have a special guest joining us in a bit and we will also be touching on the Women's Super League, which is starting very soon on Monday. That's just around the corner. But before we jump into that, let's meet our fantastic panel. We'll start with the twins. Um, Please introduce yourselves. Tell us a bit about yourselves, where your love for cricket started and why it is we should listen to you. I'm just joking about that last part. Just introduce (laughs) yourself. Um, okay, so other than known as the twins, my name is Jessica and this is sister Janine. Yo. So we we were also just mainly watching cricket. We were just fans of cricket, never really knew what goes on, you know, in the boardroom, but it was more just about what's happening on the field. So um, so we've also never played it by um, played out ourselves as well. But just watching it, you know, and the proteas and also now with the women's league that's also happening, it's also just giving us a broader perspective on other cricket, also not just men but women as well so yeah anything you want to add not, not really no where did you where did your love yeah, start and, and i know i know that um your love for the game actually inspired you to go and get yourself a, a level one umpiring certificate oh how do you know this um i'm amazing so, I, I never met you before in my life but i know geez. things wow um yeah so we did we did um, obtain a level one umpiring certificate that we did sometime earlier this year, uh, maybe month. a few months ago, two months ago, I think, October, November. So that was also an experience for us as well, you know, um, not just looking at the game from a fan's perspective, but now from the umpire's perspective as well. So, yeah, it's good to change your, your view sometimes. Yeah, and like the love for the game sort of started with like our grandma. She sort of exposed us to watching and then we just mm-hmm. got more like into it and yeah, so just sort of started long ago when we were like really young and didn't really know what was going on. We just knew December, January was like cricket season and yeah. School so holiday at, at, at yeah. Newlands, <laughs> not six gun yeah. roll Newlands. Sure. We've never been to Newlands, let's so just bring it out. Yeah, there. just um <laughs> so just Coco, uh, you know. <laughs> And <laughs> let's move on to Leisha. Tell us a bit about yourself, where your love for the game started. And, and t- tell us what you do. You have a very interesting story. Um, interesting, I don't know. Anyway, I'm Leisha. Um, by profession, I'm an international scorer of the game. But I've also got qualifications in coaching as well as umpiring, I've got my level two. And then the best part for me is being a player. I'm a provincial player. And my love for cricket started when I was six. And it stemmed from wanting to be better than the boys. <laughs> so I wanted to prove that anything they can do, I can do better. And for the most part, I was better. So yeah, that's where my love started. 
That must have been very exciting because, I mean, obviously there weren't that many girls teams when you started playing. So you were forced to play with the boys. Yes, definitely. We had no girls interested whatsoever. So there was no girls team. So I had to be part of the boys. And for the first two years, they bullied me. You know, so they were horrible until, you know, I grew some. I think you can you know? say that word. I think so. Some there are a few swear <laughs> words that um, are allowed. I just forgot which uh, of them are allowed. But we, yeah, it's okay. We'll, like, we'll, we'll send to you. Yeah. I, I think I have a beep sound somewhere. <laughs> yeah, until I grew some beep. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ran the show. I took over. And I'm still doing it. We're trying to. So you have your umpiring level to... All of you have umpiring certificates. I feel really left out of this situation. I would like to get involved. Um, I think, Leisha, because you have leveled up on the twins over there in the corner, um, I think you're the one that's going to help me out. You're going you're gonna to couple. You're going to couple me uh, some sort of way in there to get a level one umpiring certificate. I think, you know, I'm actually thinking a little bit about a career change from, from media to umpiring. I, I can't play the game. I'm not good with ball sports. My hand-eye coordination, not that fantastic. But, you know, perhaps umpiring is my calling. Are you going to couple? I'll coach you, but yes, I'll definitely couple, yeah? yeah. Thank you. Wow, I'm, I'm even getting free coaching lessons out of this. I look forward <laughs> to that, please, because I also have a media cricket match coming up. So I'm, I'm really hoping you can teach me some, you know, batting skills. So I actually I'm, do I'm get there. batting yeah. I don't, I don't want to go out for a maiden, you know. So no. <laughs> I got you, girl. I got you. <laughs> for, for a duck. <laughs> but I do want to bowl a maiden over. <laughs> that sounded a little inappropriate, but let me move on to Emily. Emily, please tell us about yourself. Um. Well, my, yeah, my story is pretty um, interesting, too, in that my parents well my, my dad and my grandfather really they weren't into into cricket that much um my grandfather was, was more a golf player he, he used to love playing golf um and my dad also like i think he he didn't even play like he played cricket i think maybe in primary school or he played for like the e team or something but like he it wasn't a big sport for him um so it, it's weird i don't know where i really found the love for it um but i just remember that um, one day, I think I was in grade six, um, or maybe younger, and my dad bought like a, you know, this play, like play cricket sets, this plastic one, and he like brought it home and we just started playing. Um, <laughs> hey, Sara. Um, <laughs> but um, we just started playing um, there in the, in the back, in the backyard. Um, and that's really where my love for it, um, for it started. Um, I think I really also just, when I, when I watched that 48 game, um, that just really, really inspired me to want to play the game too um, and like um, Leisha said like to sort of play it um, better than guys you know and so that's where I started playing um, when my love started I've been playing for quite a while I think more than 10 years or almost 10 years now um, and yeah but it's been quite a quite a struggling career I'm not gonna lie um, I've, there's been a lot of ups and downs um, and so that's where I also had interest to start umpiring um, uh, I my cricket club that I used to play for, um, they sort of put a notice in the group saying, oh, there's umpiring level one happening at our club. Like anyone who wants to join is welcome to join. So I was like, okay, well, this is a great opportunity to learn more about the game. Um, even if you're just a player, you know, to learn more about what the umpire's decisions, um, what, you know, what, what decisions they're going to make and why they're making those decisions. Um, so even if because at that point I, I really didn't plan on like going into umpiring um so i just was doing it to understand the game more um but then i got level one <laughs> level two <laughs> level three um and from then on <laughs> from then on i just um i started umpiring um tom Mokorosi and abdullah have been great um great mentors for me um and i started umpiring in the in the male um 1d league so yeah it's been it's been crazy um like I said, a lot of character building that that um, has given me. Um, but yeah, it's been great so far. Um, yeah. 
That is incredible. So how long did it take for you to do these levels, level one, level two, and level three? And if somebody like myself who mm. hasn't played cricket, hasn't played the game at all, me and the twins, how, how exactly would we become involved in that? Um, so I think uh, it took me, it didn't actually take me that long. Um, it took me, I think, I think I did it in six months, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, because I did them like back to back. Um, but if you aren't involved in the game, um, you can find on their Facebook page, on their website, they often post, um, you know, the levels and when you can do them. Um, and yeah, people are always sharing them. So you can find it there. Um, but on, yeah, it's, on, not, sorry, it's not like... On which specific websites? On the Western Province Cricket Association, Empire Association website. Um, you can find it there or on their Facebook page. Um, but I mean, it doesn't, if you haven't been playing the game before, it doesn't mean you obviously can't umpire. Like, you can just come through and it's, the rules are, they're complicated, but if you put your mind to it, anyone can learn the rules and become an umpire. Yeah, I mean, so I, mean I, I heard that the twins did it, it in, <laughs> I, I think the twins did it in five attempts. No, they're less than that. <laughs> less than that. They're less than that. Or, 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 or one, maybe. Yeah. I'm just teasing them, but I know that you get multiple attempts to to do it, right? So if if, yeah, if I do, if I'm yeah. not successful initially, so I do get another that, chance yeah. and perhaps another chance. Or can yes. I say, you know what, I'm not going to do it in Western Province. I'm I'm going to do it somewhere else. Can can I then <laughs> move to another region? <laughs> if you're going to move provinces, then yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, the region would be like this. This girl attempted it here. <laughs> You know, they're no, gonna say sorry, we can't yeah. come. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you can do it wherever, but please do it in 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 Western Province. You need more female umpires. No, I will, hundred percent. I'm so interested in this, and and I love it. I love that it's not just those who play the game that can do it, but you as yeah. well. The twins really inspire me because I know that you have a whole separate life from cricket. And then you were fans, loved the game, wanted to know more, and then you empowered yourself. Here you are sitting on this panel, and we're going to love your opinions because, you know, you've been doing this umpire level one, so you're already a level above me. That's why I'm not giving my opinion. That is why I'm sitting here asking the questions. You guys are going to get down to the nitty gritty and, and, and be telling people what you think about what is happening. So as I mentioned, we do have a very, very special guest joining us. And we are very excited about this one. I'm very excited, especially we are talking about umpiring. I think that uh, she, at 23, made history when she became the first female umpire to officiate in a first-class game in South Africa. Her name is Lauren Achenbach. Now, if my pronunciation is too harsh and too hard. I'm sure that she will tell me and she will correct <laughs> me. But she is the first South African woman. She was to umpire T20 game. She was one of the on-field umpires for the final of the 2019 ICC Women's Qualifier Africa Tournament between Zimbabwe and Namibia. This was May last year. The ICC named her as one of eight women in the ICC development panel of umpires. She was also named as one of the umpires to officiate in the matches during last year's ICC Women's World 2020 Qualifier Tournament in Scotland and in September last year, Cricket South Africa appointed her to their reserve list of umpires panel for the 2019-2020 season. Then on the 13th of September, she became the first woman to umpire in a senior men's provincial match. And in February this year, the ICC named her as one of the umpires to officiate in matches during the 2020 Women's T20 World Cup in Australia. So I don't, I'm not sure if I left anything out. I did make notes here on the side. <laughs> And I was like, there's a long list of, of accomplishments. And I just want to get everything right. And I hope that I did. I hope I did you justice. But this is one a very impressive woman. So welcome. The entire panel has been a buzz, Lauren. They've been excited. They've been talking about you. I've been working all day and I've been getting messages of excitement. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Tara. Um, I think I've learned some stuff about myself. They, um, <laughs> that's how thorough you were. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, always happy to, to do these things. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's good to get the message out there about women's umpiring and, and so on. So happy to be here. Look, the pleasure is all ours and thank you so much. So how did your love for cricket come about? Tell us about your story, the, the very beginning. Uh, a little five-year-old Lauren. How, how did this come about? <laughs> how did you get into cricket? How did it all start? So basically my mom was a scorer. She always used to score at Supersport Park. Um, and uh, it was through her basically watching cricket and so on. And my brother started playing. And at a point I said, this looks fun. I want to try this out. Uh, so I started playing at like five or six. Um, and yeah, I went on from there, played kind of throughout my school career and so on. Um, yeah, I think that's basically how I got into it. And then uh, just after school, I sort of lost interest in playing. And I thought, nah, it's, it's not worth me going out there every Saturday, every Sunday, um, not enjoying it, you know, burning in the sun, not enjoy, enjoying it. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I decided, let me see if there's a way that I can stay involved in the game or give back to the game. And I can't remember how exactly, but the idea of umpiring came up. And I thought, well, let's give this a shot. Let's see if I enjoy it. And well, obviously I do. It's five years later and I'm still doing it. So that's basically how I got into cricket and then into the umpiring. So you will go down in history as a first. So I'm, I'm not going to say that you are following in anybody's footsteps, but has there been somebody that, that you looked up to and you were like, you know what, I, I want to be similar to this individual or I, I follow their journey and I I want to be... I, I want to achieve something similar to to that individual. There's actually a couple. Like um, when I watch guys on TV, I might notice things and uh, see, like for instance, something simple body language. Hey, goodness, yes, but I like this Oaks body language. I like sort of you know, see body if I can language. incorporate that. That's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something simple. It's something easy to see. Um, <laughs> You know, but I'd sort of say, yes, but I like this of this guy. And then maybe the next guy might have something else that I like and sort of, okay, but I like that. Let's see if I can incorporate it into my style of umpiring and so on. So there's not one specific umpire usually. There's usually quite a couple of them that either you work with them or you just see them on TV. But there's usually quite a couple of them that you kind of gather different sort of, if you can say, little pieces of information or so on and eventually sort of put everything together and kind of make it your own, you know. That's amazing. But I would like to know, so I listed a lot of achievements uh, earlier um, as I was introducing you. What would you say, though, is your greatest achievement or your proudest moment? It may not even be something that I mentioned. I, I would have to say at this stage, there has to be the World Cup in February. Um it was something I didn't really expect. They, when I went to Scotland, I was like, okay, cool. But it was like a minor tournament, if I can put it that way. You know, it, it's not a big thing, but it's like sort of just the build up to where I actually want to be. And then shortly afterwards, I got the notification that I've been selected for the World Cup. And I didn't expect it really. And I was like, okay, well, I've obviously done something good somewhere. <laughs> and um, yeah, I must say that was... Um, that was probably one of my big, proudest moments, just being selected for the World Cup and being able to go there. The energy must have been amazing just because it's not very often that, that, that you get a crowd like that at a, a women's cricket match. So that must have been really incredible to be at a women's World Cup, see that, feel that, and it must have been absolutely amazing just to be there and be a part of all of that. I want to ask you just one more question because all of us here have been talking about um, doing umpire certificates. Everyone except myself have, have done at least level one umpiring certificate. So do you think that, that I could also enter this career path? And, and do you think that maybe you could mentor us a little bit? Also, if there's a young girl watching or maybe watching later, do you think that this is a, a viable career choice? Definitely. Um, if you look at the way the women's game is growing, I, I definitely would say to any girl or any woman that wants to start it, go for it. Um, however, the first piece of advice I give to anyone is make sure you enjoy it. Go do a couple of games uh, just locally and so on. Make sure you enjoy it because it's the same as playing. If you don't enjoy it, it the Saturdays and Sundays are just going to be extremely long <laughs> and so on. But there's definitely 
definitely very or a lot of opportunities. Um, so any girl that wants to as or you know, is thinking of trying it, or any, any woman that's thinking of trying it, do it. Um, it it's really there are a lot of opportunities out there. So I think it definitely it is is a career option. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to open it up to the panel now to ask questions. They they are very excited. So sure. anybody want to ask that first question? <laughs> you can unmute yourself. Looks, looks like the twins might have a question there. It's twins. But they, I think they're trying to figure out how to unmute themselves first. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, yes. No, you muted yourself. Yes. Okay, there, success. Yeah. With the kind of like the music do it. Um, <laughs> um, I have a question. Such an inspiring story, obviously. I have a question for you, Lauren. Um, firstly, thank you also for giving your time to speak to us people who don't know much about this. <laughs> um, I would like to know, what was your most difficult call to make as an umpire? Was there ever a time you were just like, wow, this is just testing me to the next level? Or was it just smooth sailing? No, definitely not smooth sailing. Um, I don't think I'll be able to like pick like <laughs> one decision or something. There's there's too many of them. But um, as far as you go, every, we always say that you, can't, you cannot stop learning. And you come to a point where you think, well, right, I've learned everything. And then someone else comes in like, um, hey, you can improve in on this. Um, so definitely not smooth sailing. The first couple of seasons was actually quite hard, kind of figuring out what works for you, what doesn't work for you, um, and so on. Um, but you, so once you kind of got your rhythm and so on, it's not smooth sailing from there, but it, it definitely gets a little bit better at least. Um, mm -hmm. But you no, know, I've, I've had a couple of tough, tough calls over my career and stuff. Um, so yeah, a little bit ups and downs as along the way as well, but, uh, it's all a learning curve and yeah. just um, as long as you take, you know, what you've, if you've made a mistake or someone points out something you can improve on, take it as a learning opportunity and try and learn from that. Mm. Um, that's the best advice I can give in sorts of circumstances like that. Thank you. I have two questions for you, Lauren. Yeah, um, I think, <laughs> hey, Lauren. Um, I think the first one is your first experience with the DRS. Like, what was going through your mind? How was that experience? Um, and the other question is, when you when you took um, your when you had your first your first match, um, Sri Lanka against the Proteas. How was <laughs> like what, what was going through your mind for that first game? I'm stepping out, stepping out into Newlands. Um, Obviously, your first international yeah. game. How was that? So I'm going to start with yeah. the second question. Um, that was quite nerve-wracking. Um, first game on TV, you kind of know that there's quite a lot of people watching and so on. Um, and like all, a lot of stuff like run through your mind. Um, so obviously there, there's not DRS. So you're kind of not worried about that, really. But it's, there's just still a whole lot of stuff running through your mind and so on. But... Um, it was it was quite nerve wracking, um, especially the first couple of overs. It kind of took me a bit to just kind of get the nerves to settle a bit and uh, just you know kind of just like just do your what you've always done. That's kind of what got you here. So, uh, but very nice experience in the end. Um, you know, I actually very much enjoyed the game. The comments I got afterwards, uh, just uh, like I walked off and. Um, there were one or two incidents that I thought, oh, sh this was not, not the best game ever. But then I got comments afterwards um, that actually lifted me a bit. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I don't have such a bad game. Um, but very nice experience. Very much enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to give credit to you guys. Not, not a bad place to make your international debut, uh, Newlands. Got a nice ground with a mountain in the background. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, going on to the DRS, it's... Um, it was a bit different knowing that now like you can make a decision and the captain simply does that. And then you like kind of watch that big screen, like, please just, please just, you know, be right. <laughs> Luckily I had, I think the very first decision that I made, it was like in the last over of the innings and the girl had moved like very far across off stump. I was like, and she kind of played a sweep shot, if I remember. I was like, no, that's definitely, that's like, you could see all three stumps. And the captain just kind of went just to 
try and see if there's anything in it. I was like, ugh, no, man. <laughs> I knew it somewhere from the beginning, so that kind of helped me a little bit in that aspect. Just to know that the first review, I'm at least not going to have to overturn. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I was just... going to say, like, for your first one to be a plum decision is always probably a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just knowing that there's no ways that I'm going to have to do the signal at least. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is a bit different, like, sort of knowing in the back of your mind that just the captain can go like this and you might have to overturn it. But um, you try and not think about it. You you try to still just know that, like, when the bowler's at the top of their mark, you, you know you have to focus at the business end and just make your decision on what you see. Don't worry about DRS or cameras or anything else. Um, just make your decision on um, what you see. And what was nice for me is um, I had a meeting with Murray Erasmus, uh, I think a couple of weeks before I went, that he could explain a bit about his sort of processes with DRS and how he handles it. And one thing that he mentioned to me is um, if you have to overturn a decision, try to take as much learning from that. Um, so say, for instance, you got the bounce wrong, uh, where you thought maybe it's going too high, but it's hitting actually kind of thing. Um, try and take a learning from that, that knowing, okay, maybe next time it must be sort of a ball above the stumps, what you see, and then maybe it might be over lungs. Just something like that, you know. Um, and I think that helped me. I think I only luckily had one decision um, that I overturned, and then I realised um, that the ball... It, it was actually a fact like that. It looked like it was going over the stumps, but actually it, it wasn't. So like from that, I knew, okay, well, next time, um, if it looks like it's sort of going over the stumps, maybe, you know, they go a little bit higher than what you're actually thinking uh, kind of thing. So um, that was that was really nice to at least have someone to give me some advice um, in terms of the ORS because I'd never used it. Um, so, and then in the... The, the TV game I had where I was TV umpire was also, uh, you know, you train for this stuff. We did a lot of simulations and stuff, but it's still something different when, um, you know, the game's actually on. It's like your first uh, TV game and you just kind of try and stick to the processes you've learned um, and just uh, trust that they'll, you know, kind of get you through it. Cool, thanks. <laughs> sure, no problem. Lisha, do you have any now. questions? Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, firstly, I'd like to say you really are inspiring, Lauren. Um, I actually did my level one and level two because um, the umpire saying I was like, you know this lady, Lauren, she started umpiring, <laughs> and then I was like, I want to be like her, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, and so, like, I haven't been following closely, but I know of you, and, like, you're the reason why I went for umpiring, because, like, I feel like it's very inspiring to see females um, breaking through what is known as a male-dominated field. And um, my question for you is, do you enjoy giving <laughs> albies? No, I'm joking. Um, um, <laughs> I'd like to know, like, was there ever any incidents where players try to intimidate or question you in a disorderly kind of uh, and how do you, how sure. do you do uh, that? First of all, thanks for the kind words. Uh, it actually means a lot to me to know that someone's actually choosing this path because they basically saw me or, or heard of me. Um, in terms of your question, yes. Uh, there's been a couple of times um, that the players, first of all, kind of try and pressure you into getting the decision to go their way. Um, and yes, they sometimes they do kind of, to put it bluntly, kind of got drug on date, if I can put it that way. I hope everyone understands. But um, the best way is just to kind of put them back in their place. Um, I actually, the week back, I had a an incident where I gave a decision and the guy from the boundary started, you know, yelling at me. Um, and my colleague got onto his case very quickly. So in that circumstance, it wasn't me actually, but sometimes you kind of do need your colleague's help. Um, but to just put them in their place and um, kind of make them understand that if they continue, we can easily just... Uh, 
report them, you know, code of conduct. And uh, sometimes a player is quite scared of that and just okay, well, I don't want, I don't want a code of conduct against me. <laughs> but you kind of first just kind of get them to just um, go get back into the place, kind of just kind of get them to stop it. But if they really do continue, you kind of just uh, warn them that listen, if you're gonna go on like this, I'm gonna not have a other option but to report you, you know. Um, and then also just um, being a bit tough. You have to you have to be a bit tough. Um, like I say, they do try and pressure you sometimes. So just you shouldn't let that get to you. Um, sometimes you have a very big appeal. And if you say you feel it's not out, give it not out. It, and just stand by your decision. Whatever you do, just stand by your decision. Um, don't now sort of, um, because the players are pressuring you or so on, Want to turn against your decision? Just tell them. Listen, I thought that was going down leg or whatever. Um, the case may be. Um, that would be my advice in in that. Thank you. I'm asking no because I'm a real hothead, so. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I put, I I've got your I've got your name now. The next time, if I ever stand you, I'll know. I'll know. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Lauren, just just another question for you. Um, so obviously, being an umpire involves a lot of concentration, um, and you constantly have to be switched on. Um, how do you sort of manage between being switching down and switching up, um, especially when you're standing at the um, at the square leg? You know, how do you manage to keep focused um, for that quick runoff that might happen, um, or yeah, quick decision that needs to be made. Mm. Uh, it's just finding routines that work for you. Um, I think that's where my playing days helped a bit. You know, batting, you can't be focused all the time. Obviously, you face the ball and then you'll kind of switch off for a bit. Uh, and it's just finding routines for you. So um, I think I usually kind of just have a scan what's going on around on the field or, um, you know, these days with the, the COVID now, it's a little bit more, you have to kind of watch the ball, but that's not switched on as, as such. It's like you say, switching down, not totally switched off, but um, it will kind of be sort of be between watching that the guys don't use their saliva and stuff for the ball and just scanning around the field. And then as soon as I the ball is sort of at the top of their mark, I'll get into my position, um, how I stand, and um, I've... Uh, can't even remember what I do now, but I've, I've got something that I do, and I know I'm switched on. I seriously can't remember what I do now, but I know there's something. Every time something happens on the field, I know I'm switched on at least. So, um, but then just focus for that ball and take it ball by ball. Um, especially like sometimes you've got a decision that maybe the player doesn't agree with or um, whatever the case may be. Just forget about that. It's not going to change the um, you know, you can't change it and stuff. So just make sure you focus for the next ball um, because otherwise if you keep focusing on what's happened two or three balls earlier, you might miss something that's happened and get another one wrong or, or, or so on. So uh, take it ball by ball and just routines, yeah. So, Lauren, we have a couple of fans who want to ask you questions. So we're sure. going to start with that first question. Since you're all oh, umpires, sorry. can I ask, may seem like a dumb question, but why does the umpires call overrule DRS? Skull face. Why does the umpires? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's, uh, I guess it stands in the blank conditions. <laughs> I don't know. I can't answer that one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, unfortunately, I really can't answer that one. It's, it's one of those things. It's... Uh, in the playing conditions and we kind of just follow it. Uh, that's the best answer I can give. I, I think what really excites me about that question is that um, this individual said, since we are all umpires, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, there's another question. Hey, Lauren, how yeah. are you? One question for you. What changes do you want in the women's game so that it becomes more popular? So this is sort of a question that I've actually been asked quite a lot. Um, and to me, it's exposure. Um, we need to get the word out there um, about the game and that it actually exists. Um, 
I'm not sure about now, but like I know I was at the Wanderers, I think about two years back. <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> oh, it's COVID not time, COVID. eh? No, it's a good COVID, thing that this is a video <laughs> um, call. <laughs> hope not, I hope not. Um, but um, exposure, whether it's advertising or getting TV games or I don't know, whatever means you've got, just to get it out there that um, women's games does exist and um, get little girls involved from a grassroots level. Uh, you know, like I say, I mean, most of us here mentioned we were quite young when we got um, introduced to cricket, whether we were just playing, watching on TV, whatever. Um, but uh, introducing the girls from grassroots level um, and, you know, kind of develop it in, developing it from there, I would say is the best way to go. Yeah, because a, a common theme amongst all the women on the panel is that they they were forced to play with the boys. They they mm -hmm. didn't have a girl team at school. Yeah. And yeah, and they had to compete yeah. with the yeah. boys. And if they wanted to play cricket, they had to be out there with the guys. So mm -hmm. the Women's Super League is coming up. Will, will you be involved in that, Lauren? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, please don't ask me why. I think they want to give a bit of opportunities to some younger girls, which is actually a good thing. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's basically what I've got to say about it. Um, obviously, I didn't get the notification that I'm involved, so uh, I think my only sort of um thing that I can think of is I think they want to give some of the, the up and coming girls uh opportunity, which which is a good thing. Um uh, that's basically how I build experience and stuff is these sort of smaller tournaments and stuff. So uh, hopefully I find the link and I can watch a bit, um, you know, see how the girls are doing and so on. Um, and I think also especially for, for all of us having quite a long period without cricket, just being able to watch some, some cricket and some women's cricket uh, yeah, specifically. I think uh, there's a couple of excited people out there. Hopefully they are. <laughs> I, do, do you know the link? Um, you know what the link is for individuals to watch the 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 women's super league. I think Cricket South Africa might post it. I think usually they post it on their Facebook or Twitter. Um, I hope they do it of... soon because the yeah. super league is starting on Monday, which yeah, is around the corner. Are. Yeah, I think they might post. Uh, I think they usually post sort of on the day or just the day before. I'm not. I'm not sure, but if I'm not mistaken, they usually post on their Facebook or Twitter. You can just follow the link, and then you should be able to get it. And I'm sure that you'll also get the link if you are following Cricket Fanatics magazine. There's another question: What do you think about having a separate director of cricket for women's cricket? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't think I've ever been asked this before. It doesn't sound like a bad idea. Um, I'm just not sure about like in the very near future. Um, I think the women's game still has a lot to grow, but um, the way and the rate it's it's growing, I'm sure like in the future that is a possibility, and that actually sounds to me like a very good idea. I think that that is something that really could work um, in well, once a cricket has grown quite a bit in growing it even more. Well, thank you very much, Lauren, for joining us. Um, before you leave, I, I do want to ask you, because now that you you are at the top of this whole um, umpire food chain in this scenario over here. So, Leisha, I think I'm not going to ask you to couple anymore. Lauren, do you think that you can couple me some connection there with a level one umpire certificate? We can have a look. <laughs> we can always have a look. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> I'd love to. And is it true that that you get about five attempts in uh, to do this uh, level one? I don't know if there's a limit to the attempts. To be honest, I think you can have a go at it as much as you want. Yeah, I think so. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm hoping, That's I'm amazing. Hoping for it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, le the level one's not that hard. Uh, you should be able to do it quite easily. <laughs> Okay, okay. And is there a practical element? Uh, so as far as I got it, no, um, not in terms of exams, but I know some unions do do some practicals in training um, just because umpiring is a practical thing. Um, so when they have training or so on, they'll do some practicals, but uh, for the exam, no, it's, it's written. 
Okay. Thank you very much. All the best with your future endeavors. I hope so that much. you enjoy the festive season. Um, yeah, Thank in you. Cape Town, we have an older uh, adage where we say it's, uh, it's zero, it's festive. That was the PC <laughs> uh, version of, of it. So enjoy, enjoy the festive season. Stay safe. All the best to you your so family much. and your career. Thank you so much, Tara. Same to you. And uh, thanks for the girls that were on the panel as well. Uh, to them also, just good luck in their careers. And hopefully, you know, we get to see each other sometime and just have a chat or uh, something like that. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Good evening. Cheers, guys. Keep well. Okay, so so we are here now. That was amazing, an amazing conversation. And thank you to everyone who sent in questions. You are free to send in questions and comments. Just don't be a keyboard warrior because we will come at you if you are. So the Women's Super League is happening, like I said, around the corner. It's Monday. Firstly, I would like to see some more advertising, some more marketing. Um, yes, please do. The producer says that he can pop up all those teams. The teams are out. They did the draft last week. Yeah, there we have it. Beautiful. So this is the reigning champions, actually, the coronations. There are four teams. And as I said, the competition starts on Monday and it culminates, it ends on the 16th of uh, December, which is a reconciliation day, a public holiday. So hopefully you will be able to be at home and watch it on the stream as soon as Cricket South Africa shares that. So Nadine de Klerk, the captain there. This, this looks like quite a strong team. What do you think, girls? I think, um, yeah, definitely a few to watch out for over there. Um, Laura I mean, of course, Laura Wolf. Mm, <laughs> uh, you, can't, you can't look past Laura. Um, definitely, she's, she's going to be one to watch. Um, she's been in quite good form recently, um, coming off the back of the women's BBL as well. So... Definitely, Laura. Um, who else do we have here? Tamsin Britt, also. Tasman Britt, excuse me. She's also one to look out for. Um, mm. Ibonga Kaka, of course. Um, so yeah, they look. They look like they. They could could be quite strong. So they will. Yeah. They will be the defending champions. So you think they have a good shot then of of defending that title? And then here we have the Duchesses mm. with Sunay Lee as their captain. Yeah, Leisha. Yeah, I, I would like you, because Leisha, you're so good with this. Or is it Everly that's good with this? This beautiful pronunciation of the, of the surname. <laughs> Which surname are you referring to? <laughs> oh, wait, I can't. I, I, I thought that you could see my arrow. <laughs> I might just tap out of the... <laughs> um, but I think, out, yeah, there's a few, a few to watch there. Um, of course, you know, very experienced being on Priya there. Um, and Faye Tanika, who's an outstanding batsman. Um, she's, yeah, she's outstanding. So hopefully she'll get a few runs. Um, yeah, uh, Robin Stoll as well, up and coming um, player. So yeah, really a lot, a lot of good players as well on that team. Ooh, so this is the starlight. Mm. Also some strong players here. Although I'm not allowed to give my opinion. So twins, jump in here. Um, I think Captain Chloe Tryon, I think she's been an amazing captain in a, in, yeah, so... <laughs> I really don't know much about these players. Um, I say that with um, much. Uh, no, of course we, we don't <laughs> often see. We are here. Yeah, we don't often see these uh, women playing, mm -hmm. so we don't we, exactly. we don't know them as well as the men. Yeah, like and that's why you're right. That's why we are here. That's why we are doing this show to you know mm -hmm. highlight these players, and they are up and coming players and new players in these mm -hmm. teams and new talent. Because I think it was just mm. last week um, I saw that the English Cricket Board have now 41 female yeah. 
who have professional contracts. I'm not even sure exactly how many South African women have professional contracts with Cricket South Africa. Maybe our producer knows. Eh? Um, we should ask the third umpire. The last time I checked, there was 13 contracts. 13. So 13 Ooh. versus 41. And I was yeah, very happy to see so those happy. 41 yeah. contracts. It really excited me because I thought this is this is something that's doing something great. You know, this is happening internationally in England. Fantastic. And I hope that it filters through to the other cricketing nations like us mm -hmm. and even countries like, you know, how how many Zimbabwe uh, women do you know that, that that play cricket? Can can you mention any Zimbabwean cricketers? Females, not 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 the men. Um, to be honest, I don't even know they had a female team. That's actually, <laughs> that, that, that was actually a rhetorical question. Um, <laughs> not actually putting you on the spot. Okay, here's the next uh, team, the final team, the Souls. This is, this is interesting, Captain Tumi Sekakune. And then also they have Shabnam Ishmael. She did something great recently. I'm sure you all saw that. Yeah. Yes, Shabnam's team won the women's big bash. League. Yes. And she was yeah, yeah. She she's a gem of a bowler, I think. Um Trisha Chetty is our keeper, so I think she's also due for some runs. I mean, we're watching her, we're watching out for him. <laughs> but <laughs> But I think as far as all the teams are concerned, I feel like they're very well balanced with um, experience as well as newcomers. And it's actually exciting. Hopefully next year, there'll be some Eastern Province players. Are, are you referring to yourself? Because are you referring to yourself, <laughs> Alicia? <laughs> because you know what, Alicia? You know? I, I, no. Alicia, I would love to see you in action. <laughs> I really would love to see you in action. Well, tell COVID to go away. And then I will. will. <laughs> and once COVID has gone away, I will fly to where you are to see you in action. Oh, that would be lovely to see yeah, you at Six Gun Gorgulans. <laughs> One day. One day soon. One day soon. They're rolling out a vaccine and we'll work it out. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to see you, Lisa, no. too, in action. I'd like to make one comment about um, this, this Super League is that, like what Lisha was saying, it's it's a great opportunity for the youngsters. I think there's about, I don't know, there's there quite a few youngsters. Um, there's a 17 or 18 year old, if I'm not mistaken, and 19 and 20 year olds. So it's a really good opportunity for them to, um, as Lisha was saying, learn from the, the experienced players. Um, so I'm very excited to see the growth um, and yeah, the other talent that's, that's out there. I think it's a great opportunity, as you said, to expose that talent. Also, I think that people should watch it and follow Cricket Fanatics because I'm sure that they'll be putting out a lot of pieces um, on the, the games that take place, on players, that I'm sure lots of content. And of course, we will be talking about it. It's happening next week. There's another show happening on Thursday. We will be watching closely. We'll make sure that we at least catch a bit of the action. Right, girls? We're catching a little bit of the action, at least. We Just before we leave, there are a few exciting things happening. Sri Lanka definitely coming down. Definitely for Boxing Day and New Year's test. At least we hope so. Um, COVID permitting or COVID protocols permitting. We don't want another England situation. Although um, I was listening to the interim board today, that presser, and apparently... The, it was all England's fault, really. They, 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 Cricket South Africa didn't really have anything to do with the blame. So perhaps it will be, uh, it will work out. It will all work out for Boxing Day. I'm looking forward to that. It's happening, Centurion and Wanderers. And then also we are going to Pakistan. Also COVID permitting. Any of you Pakistan girls family, want to comment yeah. on these calls that's happening? I'm excited for Sri Lanka to come. I'm really excited for Sri Lanka to come. I just hope COVID doesn't interfere like um with England, you know. 
but um, I'm really looking forward to some test matches played at home grounds and hopefully the Proteas, you know, can um, <laughs> defend their And who's your, captain? who's your captain, Alicia? <laughs> For South Africa. Yeah, who's your, who's your captain? Who's your choice? Who test captain, okay. that is. On the spot, um, on the spot. You have five uh, seconds. It's like a do or die please question. Please. Don't do that, my heart is racing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. I, I don't two, know. Two more seconds. Two ones, who's your captain? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think we all made it at this point because... <laughs> Yeah, I think we, we're just afraid what the other people might say based on our choices. So just say something. I mean, like I said, we, we don't need keyboard warriors um, here. Okay. The core. Oh, okay. Wow, you want him everywhere. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> Emily, who's your choice there, Emily? <laughs> that's, you know, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, if Aiden Markham was... I mean, I would have gone with Aiden Markham, but... Um, because yeah, I feel like I feel like Eden Markham has a lot of potential um to be a captain. Um, but well, I think I think I'm also going to have to go with Quinny. Um, simply because of his like him now be, um being captain in the other formats. I don't know, not too sure. I actually really liked Faf as captain, <laughs> but um yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. You say that, and I, I was going through Twitter, and you know the minefield that Twitter is, and a lot of fans were calling for Faf. They were like, please, you know, give us Faf again. And it's very funny because just before COVID, they were calling for Faf's head. It's the pickle fans. But anyhow, we are wrapping it up now and have to say goodbye because I'm getting messages from our producer. He's like, you need to stop talking now. So I'm about to stop talking. Thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you to the twins whose names we often forget. Um, Emily, thank you so much. Leisha, it's been a pleasure. Next time you see us, we may all be umpiring. Actually, next time you see us is next week, Thursday. Save the date. So we probably won't all be umpiring. But um, I am working on that, definitely. And we are excited to see you again next week. Remember to like, subscribe, do all the social media things with Cricket Fanatics. And yes, like, comment, share. There's all the things on the screen. Do the most. Click that button. And remember that um, there's lots of content being put out on Cricket Fanatics daily. So stay tuned. You, are, you won't be disappointed. There's, there's lots to catch. And remember, Women's Super League starting on Monday. Thank you very much. Yeah.